From the mysteries of the deep to the power of human innovation, the future of our oceans is in our hands. Together, we can protect the oceans that sustain us all. Join me on a journey of discovery, innovation, and change. Let's create a future where our oceans are safe, healthy, and harmonious. This is Harmonious Oceans. Hey everyone, welcome back to Harmonious Oceans. Let's delve straight into the sixth letter M, navigating the threat of commercial whaling. Today's topic is a bit of a heavy one, but it's super important. And yes, we're going to be talking about Whale 52, the loneliest whale in the world and why his story is a powerful symbol of what's at stake. Let's kick things off with the big question, why should we care about whales? Whales are more than just the gentle giants of the ocean. These magnificent creatures play a huge role in maintaining the health of our marine ecosystems. Each great whale captures and stores around 33 tonnes of CO2 over their lifetime. That's like planting thousands of trees just by letting whales live and do their thing. Plus, when they die naturally, their bodies sink to the ocean floor creating deep sea ecosystems that support countless marine species. They're literally the guardians of our ocean. But despite a global moratorium on commercial whaling that's been in place since 1986, countries like Japan, Norway and Iceland continue to hunt whales. Over 15,000 whales have been killed since the ban was put in place. And it's not just about traditional survival, it's about profit. To understand why this is such a big deal, we need to take a look back at the dark history of commercial whaling. Picture this, it's the early 20th century and whaling ships are cruising through the Antarctic, equipped with harpoon cannons that explode inside the whales they hit. Over a million whales were slaughtered in those icy waters, almost wiping out the entire species, like the blue whale, the largest animal to ever exist on Earth. Whales were hunted for their blubber, which was turned into oil, and their baleen used to make everything from corsets to buggy whips. And this wasn't some small-scale operation. This was an industrialized killing spree that left our oceans echoing with silence. Now, decades later, we're still dealing with the aftermath. Some whale populations have never recovered, and the idea of lifting the whaling ban is like reopening an old wound that has barely begun to heal. One argument that's often tossed around by pro-whaling countries is that we need to cull whales to protect fish stocks. They claim that whales are eating too many fish and that's why our oceans are struggling. But here's the truth. It's not the whales that are overfishing, it's us. Commercial fishing practices have devastated fish populations and blaming whales is like blaming the rain for a flood when we've been tearing down the dams. Whales and fish existed in harmony for millions of years before humans showed up, with our trawlers and nets. The idea that culling whales will restore balance to the oceans is not only scientifically unproven, it's dangerous. We need to focus on sustainable fishing practices, not killing more whales. Now, let's talk about Whale 52. If you never heard of the story, buckle up. His story is one that sticks with you. In 1989, researchers detected a strange sound in the ocean at a frequency of 52 hertz. At first, they thought it was a submarine, but it turned out to be a whale. A whale that sings at a frequency so unique that no other whale can understand it. He's been nicknamed the loneliest whale because he's been calling out year after year and no one knows if there's another whale that's even answered him. Now, let's hear from Antoinette, who's co-founder of the Gallifrey Foundation, whose vision is to make progress by translating research into action. She's very passionate about the complex interrelationships of the ocean, plastics, gender, overfishing on social injustice, human health, and the environment. She's created and co-created a number of initiatives, her focus is marine conservation and she firmly believes everything is connected. Let's hear more from her 
about whale conservation and one of the most beautiful creatures in the ocean, whales. One of the areas you work deeply in is about whale conservation. Could you please share more about it and what are the challenges and how we can protect them and save them from extinction? Um, well, my first question is why the hell are we killing whales? And, you know, uh, they're yeah. beautiful creatures. They're key keystone species for ocean health. Um, and it's not just that they're wonderful and soulful, soulful creatures, but they actually play a huge role, not only in climate sequestration, because the value of a whale um, is such that when they die, the whole of the carbon sinks to the bottom of the ocean, plus their whale poop. Um, so these are hugely valuable. We've actually, economists have tried to put a value on whales. I don't think we should ever value anything in economic terms, but just for the right that they are beautiful and important and an incredible part of our, our ecosystem. At a moment when the ocean is so stressed, it's not just whaling, it's marine heat waves, it's toxic chemical noise um, uh, and plastic pollution. Yeah. It, we don't know enough to think, oh, well, because the populations are, seem okay today, and many of these whales that have been targeted, they're, they, um, they, the, the populations can um, turn on a dime, um, about they discovered that 7,000 humpback whales starved to death due to a marine heat wave. Wow. Yeah. So we, we sit there and we think we're working in this direction. And yeah. my job is all about externalities. Um, you talk about how important the ocean is. I'm here in London. What the ocean, what has that got to do? But it's got everything to do with it. Yeah. You know, half our oxygen is coming from the ocean. Yeah. Um, Oh, we're made of 70% water. So is the, so is the planet. 70% yeah. is ocean. Um, and following on from that, whales are so huge, the blue whale being the largest animal on the planet, um, and they need so much food to survive. Um, however, due to temperature changes and ice melting, less sea ice is an upswing in large-scale large fishery op operations. For example, krill, an ingredient used in aquaculture feed, pet food, and health supplements. What actions can be taken to protect the species of the deep and hence our oceans? In terms of what can we do to make the ocean healthy for whales in particular, uh, obviously commercial whaling is a slam dunk. We don't need to do it. This is not feeding people. This is not uh, people who are starving. This is done on a very different basis. And that's the question. Why are we doing it? The second is, if we think about the increase in shipping on routes across the ocean, in fact, I think there's something called ship tracker. If you look at it, I mean, the ocean, you can see that, I mean, it's like covered. Well, those are going quite fast because we're ordering everything on Amazon. So things are shipping all over the place. Um, that speed kills whales they don't hear it and ship um collisions with whales where there are some groups trying to lower the speed so that at least whales if they don't see them uh, hear them they can see them enough to get out of the way but they don't react very quickly um entanglement in fishing gear so our fishing sushi habits if you look there's a sushi store in virtually every high street in the uk and everywhere around the world that has been lethal for the whole of the ocean. So less, less of our, our reliance on fish, um, particularly think about what type of fish we're having. And I think the most important is ocean noise, you know, shipping traffic, sears make it exploration. So I think, um, again, as I said earlier, there are many things um, that could be done. For the krill fishing, again, oh my gosh, we're taking away the food of creatures, not just whales, penguins and seals, who survive only on this. In a world where marine heat waves mean that krill reproduction is slowing down. So that's diminishing yeah. and demand, we're not helping those creatures, we're just saying, oh, we're gonna make it worse for you.
And the big thing I would say to anyone listening is there's this sense of helplessness. What can I do? This is all happening out there. Well, actually, there's a lot we can do. There are a number of whaling organizations. There are petitions. Um, you can write to your minister and say, I want better um, ocean protection. I was reading and I came across the 52 Hertz whale. Um, the, uh, I read about the mystery and it being the loneliest whale in the world. Um, so what kind of policy changes do you think are needed at a global scale to protect such whales? We need to understand that noise pollution is a real thing. It's affecting their behavior and noise underwater carries really very far. And it's back to what I said about the ship uh, collisions. So whilst we're talking about, so for, for our lovely lonely whale, every whale is now a lonely whale. Uh, and that's why we need to change uh, rules about acoustic or seismic blasting underwater, about slowing down our speeds, about the amount. And that is driven by our consumerism. So yeah. let's think about how much do we really need to buy something online? What about if I actually went to my local store or bought vintage or actually um, you know, just found the small businesses who are local, who you know you're not making, they're land-based. They haven't come from anywhere else. So I know we all need some things, but we don't need everything all the time and immediately. Sometimes waiting for something is exciting. Are there any simple steps the youth can take to raise awareness about this challenge? So first thing, what can we do at home? Consume responsibly. So that's don't eat as much fill, uh, uh, as much fish. Um, Avoid krill products. Oh my gosh, they're everywhere. They're not as good as there's some actual amazing um, vegetable products that you can find that do the job equally well or better. Uh, don't eat farmed salmon because farmed salmon, they are fishing for the krill in the Antarctic, taking it all the way back up to feed the salmon so it has the pink color because farmed salmon is gray. Let me just be clear, it's gray. All of this is damn marketing. So try and avoid that, that fit. You, we don't have to have fish all the time. If you do have fish, and my daughter does, she comes to me and I said, if you're going to have it, have it in season, wild Atlantic salmon is sustainable, but it's a time of year. It's not all the time. So yeah. appreciate that. Um, then the other thing is get involved. Uh, there are a number of whaling organizations that uh, donate, do campaigns. Paul Watson, the key person who started Sea Shepherd, okay, he has been arrested in the Faroe Islands, um, which is uh, part of the De Denmark. Um, and they are have imprisoned him. And they are going to, Japan has asked to extradite him. The reason why is these are the company uh, countries he has been campaigning against, against whale, whale hunting. Yeah. I mean, and yet on the other side, fossil fuel producers are making trillions in profits, destroying the planet and they're getting away scot-free. So yeah. it's basically, and avoid plastics. Plastics are hugely important in entanglement, in ingestion, in killing whales. As we just heard from Antoinette, how we can navigate the threat of commercial whaling and how Whale 52 has become a symbol of isolation and resilience in a world that's increasingly hostile to the natural wonders of our planet. His unique song, Echoes in the Ocean, a reminder of what we stand to lose if we don't act. This isn't just a story about a single whale. It's a story about all the whales that have been lost due to hunting and all the voices in our oceans that have been silenced. Together, we can navigate the threats of our oceans and create a future where commercial whaling is a dark chapter in history, not the present reality. Let's make sure the voices of whales are heard loud and clear. Thanks for tuning into Harmonious Oceans. Remember, our planet is in our hands and every little action we take can ripple out into a wave of change. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button subscribe for more ocean saving content and drop a comment below. What did you think about the story of Whale 52?